Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And if you can see behind me, I have a new bookcase. In fact, I get, was given two new bookcases. So it's been really fun getting to reorganize my collection. Uh, what you're seeing behind me is my TBR bookcase. What the heck, I'm going to insert some clips of me just briefly kind of showing you how my two bookcases are now laid out. I'm not going to go over each book individually because I don't enjoy those type of videos. This is going to just be brief. So starting off with my TBR shelf, I have my library books. Then I have my fiction. I have my fantasy. Oops. I have my fantasy shelf, I have the sci-fi, and then here at the bottom I have nonfiction, which is one of the reasons why I have a goal to read more nonfiction this year. And now coming over to my red shelf, that in the corner is just textbooks. Then I have this first one, fiction, and then this one is memoirs, and then a nonfiction. And I have my fantasy reads, and these are all things that I have read. Then I have my science fiction. And then this is my husband's. And then I just kind of have some writing craft books that I use, like naming books, and things about space, because I like writing about you know, space, I'm a science fiction writer, and then just the random cross-stitch book. All right, so now that that is over and I am done glowing that I have some new bookcases and can spread my collection out, let's get into the books that I have finished this week. Okay, so the first book I finished this week was A Space Girl from Earth by Christina McMullen. This is one of the self-published science fiction contest books my team Book Invasion was reading initially. And if you saw my semifinalist video, you know this is one of the ones who got to the semifinals. This is about a young woman who finds out that she is not from Earth, even though she's grown up on Earth and that's all she knows. And life gets a little more complicated. This is a sci-fi romance. And this is the first book in what I think is a trilogy. During the initial phase when we were reading the 10 to 20%, I would pass 20% because this book had to be hooked. Really well done. The writing is nice and tight. The feelings of the main character, Ellie, on discovering that she's actually an alien and not a human is very real. <laughs> you can relate to the, those feelings. Overall, I really enjoyed this. Towards the latter half of the book, I did feel like it got more plot heavy than character focused because it was trying, basically just because it was maneuvering the story to a certain point so that certain things could happen. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I just prefer my books to be a little more subtle and a little more character driven for the plot. Or I prefer my characters to drive the plot. However, again, my group did choose this one as one of our semi-finalists. I finished The Earl and the Enchantress by Paulette Golden. I ended up getting an ebook arc for this. And this is a historical romance. Despite it having the word Enchantress in the title, there is no fantasy in this. It's just straight historical romance. And the historical is very much on point. The author, when I read her bio after reading the story, that's you know, at the end of the book, it, it did say that this type of, or this Georgian history era, era is what she has studied, and it comes through. And as she talks about the clothing and the homes, art, she knows the history of this world. And so as characters are talking about, you know, different writers at the time, it feels like you're fully immersed in the time period. 
with the romance intertwined. And I really enjoyed it. But readers beware, it does heavily have the miscommunication trope. It also has the not like other girls trope. It was cute with the miscommunication trope. The main character basically calls the hero on, or yeah, calls the love interest on the bullshit. And it's like, no, you need to communicate with me. No, you cannot keep these secrets. You need to communicate with me. So the characters in the book are calling out the miscommunication, which then makes it feel more real and not so, well, they have to miscommunicate for the plot. You have trauma here that is happening, which makes someone not want to communicate. And the main, the main character is like, I realize you don't want to tell me, but because of these circumstances, you have to tell me. And then I read A Dash of Romance by Paulette Golden. This has a novella at the beginning and then a whole bunch of flash fiction, historical fiction, which was <laughs> the first time I read flash fiction, historical fiction. I'm going to talk about those first hits and misses. That's kind of how it is with short stories. There were some that I really liked and then some that I didn't, but it came from like romance from all over. So you had romance between people who've been married for a while, people who haven't or are wanting to get engaged, but circumstances means like they need to make so much money. It was all over. Even had some speculative historical romance in there as well. So it's not just straight historical romance. So going back to the novella, I absolutely adored it. This follows Miss Abby Walsley, who is a vicar's daughter, and so part of what she does is she goes and take, you know, checks in on her neighbors, and one of her neighbors is a Lady Dunley, and Lady Dunley wants her to be her companion. And Abby doesn't want to be her companion. Abby wants to be an author. Lady Dunley tells her son to go propose. So then Lord Dunley comes and says, okay, I'm here to marry you. But he can't get her name right, and she basically makes up a, a secret betrothment. Doesn't name anyone, but describes them, and says where she met them. So then Lord Dunley goes and hunts down this person to get him to break off the engagement, which brings us to Percival Randall, who is courting someone else, hasn't decided whether or not he wants to actually marry her until her father pulls him into the office and basically lays into him. But he doesn't know why. So when he goes home, he find, he gets the letter from Lord Dunley yeah, saying, hey, let her know that she can break it off. I'd rather marry her because my mom wants her to be her companion. And then one from his father who has given him an ultimatum that he has to be married by a certain time. So then he goes out to meet this woman who has said that she's engaged to him, who he doesn't know, he's kind of pissed, and then they meet. And she ends up telling him the truth, and so they decide to work together for each other's advancement, and in the process of that, they fall in love. And I adored this novella. You get a chance I would read a dash of romance and read the novella and yeah I adore Abby and Percival. So what am I currently reading? I am currently reading The Stars Within by Lena Allison Knight. Also one of the self-published science fiction contest books. Did I need to have this read by a certain or did I need to have this read by January 30th? Yes, yes I did. I end up marking it as a did not attempt on our score sheet, which means the score was taken out of everyone else and not me. Now, before I made the decision to put a pause on this, I did go into the score sheet and I played with the numbers to see is is my score going to affect whether or not this book gets in, into the semifinals, or yeah, gets into the semifinals. And no, it wouldn't have, it would have still remained the lower three of the six that we have. So I took the pause that I needed, read the historical romance as a palate cleanser, and then came back to this. And basically what happened is this is a, a classic sci-fi with uh, psychics, or psionics as they're called. So they have powers, and all psionics are owned by companies. 
and that was leaving a really distasteful note in my mouth. I was not happy with the concept of reading that any people are considered property of somebody else, especially when they didn't grow up that way, or especially because not all the citizens are that. It's just because they have these powers. So that's now their property. And so I needed a step back from that. I have continued reading it since, and I am enjoying it. This author has to be a science fiction reader herself because you get the classic sci-fi notes in this book that you would you typically have in the genre. So I am enjoying it. I will have more information next week. I promise I am going to be finishing this. I'm like 10 chapters away. I will have this read in this next week. And then because my husband has asked me, I have barely started, ooh, can't really see that, <laughs> barely started Crucible of Hell, which is about the battle at Okinawa. My husband likes his military history, so I've read just like the prologue of it so far. I'm very slow with nonfiction. <laughs> this is now a new month of February, we have a pile of possibilities again. So I'm going to be right back. I'm going over the pile of possibilities, starting with the library books. I still need to read An Unnatural Life by Erin Wagner. This is my buzzword prompt for January. Then I have Where It Rains in Colors by Denise Crittenden, which is my February <laughs> buzzword prompt with my verb being rains. I have volumes two, three, and four of Delicious in the Dungeon. I'm working to get to seven, which completes my 2000 through 2023 prompts. I had been listening to Elantris on CD, but someone actually requested it. I thought I would basically have it for a while. So I'm, because I just got this recently in from the library, I'm going to be switching to the book format. And this was my January prompt for Somber, Somber Honey Books reading challenge for this year. And then here's a couple you have seen before. I have The Curious Incident of the Dog and the Nighttime by Mark Hayden, Full Moon by Jim Butcher, The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, The Souls of China by Ian Johnson. Again, I read nonfiction slowly. Space Craze, which is a nonfiction that I have found recently. From the synopsis that I've gotten of this one, this is talking about space history and science fiction history and our fascination with space. Unfortunately, this came out at the end of 2022, so I don't think a lot of people know about this, but otherwise I think this would have been like one of the other related medias that people could have read and then nominated for the Hugos. Well, you still can if you have read it. The Weeping Woman by Zoe Valdez. And then in the owned books, so for my physical TBR, uh, for Margaret Pernard's Reading Black Author Tubers, I have uh, Fractals and The Room, the Room Within by D.L. Tillery, who is an author tuber. I'm going to put her channel down below. I have Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Golden, and then Borrowed from My Dad. I'm planning to read the first book. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I know this is like an omnibus that has, I think, the whole collection, but I'm only planning to read the first one for my 40 Before 40 challenge. A huge pile of possibilities for the month of February, which is funny because it's a shorter month. <laughs> writing wrap up. I'm going to start writing again this week. That is the big announcement because I have the bookcases set up, which means my desk no longer has all the books sitting on it. I'm making time to write this week. My February monthly writing plan is going to be the same as January. Work on the Exalted City scenes that I have left from Theo's point of view and work on the short story that 
I started in January and then come up with another short story for February. For other media, I am still watching Warehouse 13. I've gotten to season four, which is where I fell off the first time. And then we're continuing to watch season two of Vox Machina and really enjoying it. What can you expect from me coming up next? I have four reviews that I need to film for you for these. The other two books are in my husband's room and he's reading Melody currently. Uh, you are also going to be getting a video where I introduce the the six books Book Invasion has been given for the next part of the read. It, these are two other teams, semi-finalists. We have a nice mixture of things. I have put them in order according to the ones that I'm most interested to read to start reading those first. I'll say this again in that video, but they have asked us to have our books read by April 24th so that they can get all the scores collated and then get the final finalist books announced on the 1st of May. Um, also, you are going to be getting a book review for my favorite January book coming up. And I think after that, I'm hoping to go over the books I have read so far that have been published in 2022 and then add more to talk about what are my potential nominations for the Hugos. I'm hoping still to get some other 2022 books read, but I know that I'm not going to be able to get everything that I want read read. There are some books that I'm expecting to be on the nomination lists, and so I probably will just end up reading those afterwards. One of those being Babel. <laughs> I, I own a copy, but I have not continued reading from where I left off when I got it off in the library. That is where I am sitting. Thank you for your time. Let me know, what was your favorite book in January? Thank you, and have a great day.